Let's talk about the U.S. and India, right? I mean, you've already referred to a few areas where the U.S. and India uh, on the tech uh, front specifically can collaborate more, right? Um, talk to us about maybe the top three, four, five things that you think the U.S. and India need to be collaborating on that maybe they're not yet focused on. Uh, that would be good to get on the top of, you know, yeah. let's say the next uh, Modi visit to the U.S. or yeah. the next U.S. president's trip to India. What are some of those top three to five things you think would be critical and most impactful? Yeah. Uh, look, I've been bullish about U.S.-India relationship because I covered India when I worked in the Pentagon for two years. And to all those naysayers on the U.S.-India relationship, people forget where our, relations was, uh, where our relationship was in 2012, 13, 14, before the nuclear deal. And then, you know, um, I was in the Pentagon and I traveled with the Secretary Panetta when he announced the Defense Trade and Technology uh, Initiative that uh, late Secretary Carter led which was aimed to remove the technological barriers we had in improving our mill-to-mill -mill relationship. And look at where we are today in terms of, I remember the first Malabar exercise, and you, uh, you can see the last Malabar exercise uh, where you had almost all the Quad countries, I think, participating, right? And so uh, I'm a big proponent of deepening the U.S.-India relationship. Uh, during NSCAI, we argued that U.S. and India need to have a tech alliance I know that the word alliance doesn't go well on both camps, uh, but honestly, um, I'm bullish about that, and I think we should call it out. Tech alliance doesn't mean automatically a mil military alliance or some kind of a new NATO alliance that people allude to. Tech alliance, I think it's a natural next step for use in India. Why? Look at what happens among the private sector actors, both here and in India. Most of our tech sector leaders have been either of Indian origins or were born in India right? The people-to-people -people side is a tremendous value asset in our relationship, right? Um, the technology side, India has some of the best tech companies in the world. We have some of the best tech companies in the world. Why can we not do more in that space, right? India has some of the best universities in the world. We have some of the best universities in the world. Why can we not have more and more Indian students study in the United States uh, and, you know, stay here or return to India because I think it's a net net plus for both countries, right? So there's a huge potential, but I think we have to move into that next natural step, which is, I think, which I call it openly a tech alliance, right? Um, yeah. And I think there's a huge potential there to remove any existing barriers, whether it's like, I know how many times Indians have struggled with visas, you know, with, you know, being accepted in American universities, but not being able to come on time because of visa issues. All these things are being worked out and there are barriers on both sides because bureaucracy never moves fast. But I think the next natural step for us is really to move into that technology alliance framework where then, you know, you can, you can expand the, the biotech space more. You can expand the hardware space more. You know, if there's space to expand the military space, of course you, we should do that. Because I mentioned the space, the space now. Um, with satellites, where India is really a, a serious actor, and obviously the United States is a leading actor, the, it put, put, you know uh, provides a, an ample space, an ample space, no pun intended, for us to to expand our relationship. Yeah, and you know the way I think my my two cents on that, Ili, also is that uh, you know, and I'm as bullish on the U.S. India partnership, I think, as you are, and uh, have been now for several decades. I was telling you about my earlier work as well. I think the Talent piece, I think, is a critical piece. The technology piece is obviously a critical piece. And I think as part of that, a lot more R&D collaboration has got to happen. I think that's 100%. 100%. Um, I think so that core tech development can also be happening, whether it's in space, whether it's in quantum, whether it's in other aspects of the tech supply chains, uh, you know, in clean energy, batteries, etc. And of course, India is very well positioned to do it. I think usually like the you know big advantage India brings is scale and absolutely mass production and then a lot of that can then apply to other countries in the global south, right? And mm. to, to cover up gaps that you were mentioning that China is sometimes uh, very easily, uh, um, you know, eased into because that space was given to them, etc. And I think finally, I would say that ultimately, I think that political and strategic um, um, alignment, alignment, absolutely. I think that this is really a partnership for the long term future. I right? agree. I agree. And not for, you know, like just say two for five, yeah. five years, but yeah. really a multi-decade uh, partnership. Uh, at I least. agree. The one thing I would add, uh, one, one advice I always give to my Indian friend is, yeah, 
Uh, India is known as a software country, right? Yeah. Uh, it produces some of the best software in the world. But as companies are leaving China for many reasons, right? India has to become a hardware country because it has the scale, uh, it has the know-how, but it has to move into becoming a hardware country as well or a hardware nation. Because then I think it will become like a such an attractive country for all these companies that are looking for places to move their manufacturing capabilities out of China. And so I think that is the one, I think the next muscle that I would argue that India has to build in terms of moving um, forward this century.